welcome to an Everyday Canines video. In this video, we're looking at correct jumping form. Now, we all think to ourselves when we start out that dogs just know how to jump. It's natural, they jump all the time. But actually, there's a correct way of jumping, an incorrect way of jumping. And a correct way of jumping is obviously better for the dog's body, less injury prone, it's more efficient. Now, I have two dogs with two different jumping styles. One's got a very good jumping style, and one doesn't. And I'll come to that in a minute. But I'm gonna show you first by looking at what is a good jumping style. So when we talk about a good jumping style, what we want the dog to do is we want them to reach a, a, a point before the jump, collect with their hind, power off with their hind, take a nice arc over the jump, land and carry on. We want it to be a very smooth, flowing motion. If we had, an arch over this jump we would see the dog taking a perfect little arch over there they we want to see them at the point where they're stretched out and flying over the jump we want to see them in the middle of the jump we don't want them to be doing that here or at the end we want it to be a flowing setup some dogs can be taught this and improved upon this swift is a pretty natural good jumper but i mean all dogs can be helped so I want to show you what a nice form looks like with Swift and then we'll look at what a bad form looks like and then we'll discuss about how we can improve that. But this is mainly understanding your dog's jumping form and also understanding whether there might be a problem with it. Because if there's a problem with your dog's jumping form, there's going to be a reason for that and you're going to need to do something about it. So when we're looking at our dog's jumping form, we don't want them too far away from the jump because if you imagine they were coming up to a course, we want the dog to take, be taking off about here to get a nice arc over the jump. And a dog that's got a good jumping form, it always takes off at the same distance, roughly, before a jump because it, it knows how to jump. So it knows that this is a good spot to take off from. I'll clear that jump nicely if I do so. so our dogs, dogs that got a good jumping form will always take off in the same place. So I'm putting this down, I would actually use a puppy bump normally, but I'm putting this down as a marking point. And I want Swift to be there. Good girl. It's more for me than you, madam, so I know where you're going. I'm going to move out of the way because I don't want you standing on it. Okay, so I'm setting her up here. And I'm going to set a toy out. I'm going to set it out a little bit because I don't want her landing on the toy. I don't want her compressing herself so that she can get the toy and I'm going to be here and I'm going to say jump now that was on a low height micro so that was really easy for her she barely had to jump for that so let's take it up to small so now we're on 30 centimeters and I recommend going through all the heights with your dog even if you've got a large dog because you will be able to see if there's a point where their jumping style changes and you'll be able to see the difference it should be consistent. Jump! She's perhaps actually a little bit too close there. I'm going to set her back because she didn't, but it was still a nice little jump. Set you back a little bit more. Jump! That was nice. So it's a neat little arc. We're looking at no wasted space over the jump. We're not looking too much time in the air where we're losing speed and momentum. Okay, so now we're going to go up to her. Yes. Swift is a medium dog. She has measured medium. Come here, my love. So it looks enormous next to her. Good, that's nice. Sit there. But it is what she does. Jump! Look at that. Beautiful little spring over, like a lamb springing over a jump. Good girl. There was no wasted space. She took off nicely and neatly close to the jump. She cleared the bar, but she didn't over go over to, to my too much height. You know, she's not taking so much jump that they're um, so high that there's a load of air. Because what you see is um, some dogs jump so high and it's a waste of energy. She just took it just enough. And that's what we want. We want just enough. And she jumped over nicely, not touching anything. Legs all tucked up, moved on. Beautiful little jumping form. Now I'm going to show you the dog that doesn't have good jumping form. Sparrow doesn't have good jumping form. She's also a small dog, so she won't be doing the medium height. Sparrow, 
doesn't start in a sit either, she starts in a stand. Wait, jump, good girl. Micro was pretty easy for her. But I can see, even on that height, now I've set her up to take in a proper place. But I know what sparrows like, so this is an ideal place for her to take off. But I know what sparrows like in a competition, she doesn't always take off, right? Jump! She actually did them two pretty good for Sparrow. But let me show you what happens if I haven't set her up so she's got a specific jump point. If I let her choose her jump point. Jump! See, she took off too early. She took off, good girl, she took off here. When she should have taken off there. By taking off here, she not only had to propel herself further, but she was flattening out before she'd even reached this pole. So then she dropped down lower onto her. Good girl, Sparrow, come here. She's a good girl. Now, the reason Sparrow has bad jumping form is because she's got wonky eyes. If you ever look at Sparrow's eyes, they turn out a bit. They don't know, yeah. Now, what this means is that she can't, she hasn't got good um, depth perception. So she can't judge properly where to take off from. By doing these exercises and things with her, I can study her jump form. And I, I learnt that was what was wrong with her jump form. Also got some really good photographs of it. Can I improve it using these? No. So with a dog that's got already good jumping form, you can help to make him really consistent by adding in um, these little sequences, these little mini jumps. And, you know, even if a dog's got a slightly off kilter jumping style, by doing this, you can improve it. With Sparrow, because she's got ETO, early takeoff syndrome, because of her eyes, she's never going to have great jump, off, jump performance, jump commitment, because she just won't. Because she has trouble figuring out where the takeoff spot easy is, sorry, is, so what she does is she takes off early. And you can see when I gave her the correct spot to take off, she jumped perfectly. So you're probably saying to me, what was the point of doing that? Because if a dog can do it, it can do it. And if it can't, it can't. Well, I showed you something there. When Sparrow was in the correct position, I set her position, she could jump perfectly. That tells me that it's probably not a physical issue that's causing her to jump badly and that she actually can jump correctly it's obviously something else and this is how we worked out that it was to do with her eyes if you've got a dog that you set up here and they can't do that even when they're in the correct position then you're looking at some issue probably with something physical so sparrow did for a while did ha has got luxating patellas as well she's she's complicated and for a time she couldn't do this at all because she was trying to avoid taking off with her back legs and she was trying to take off with her front legs. I know it sounds very complicated, but that's what she was attempting to do. She was attempting to swing shot herself over. And in that sense, doing something like this, you, you notice these things, you pick these things up. So though you might say, well, if my dog's got good form, it's good, good form. Things can happen in our dog's career. They can pick up a little niggle. They, it might not be something that shows very obvious, but it can be subtle. You know, it, it happens to all our dogs. They're canine athletes. I think it's very unlikely that our dogs will go through their whole careers without picking up some sort of little niggly injury. It might be a tight muscle, it might be this, it might be something more serious. Doing these exercises, and I recommend filming them, and I've got footage on my, my um, computer so I can look back on them, you can actually see if your dog's jumping style changes. You can see if they've got good form to begin with, if they need work on their form, which you know some dogs do and want to prove. And as I said, you can, you can monitor your dog's condition. It's another way of seeing if your dog is fit. And when you're going back to agility now, which we've had a long break off because of the lockdowns, doing something like this will enable you to see how your dog is jumping. It might be a case that your dog, if there's a large dog, they jump medium, lovely, but as they get higher up, they don't. So then you say to yourself, why aren't they jumping that height correctly? Is it a lack of muscle? they haven't got the strength to do it? Or could it be something else? These are all factors that you're just monitoring and keeping track of what your dog is 
able to do and what it's not able to do. And understanding that is how we're going to help our dogs to keep fit. It's also how we're going to pick up on things before they become a major problem. So that's why you need to look at your jumping style and to, to monitor it over the course of your dog's career. I can tell you that when my Merlin, my Sheltie, he was a medium, he used to jump beautifully. Beautiful, never had, he was, he was like swift. It was always a perfect jump. And then he suddenly reached a point where his health deteriorated and he took a pole. And that was the first pole he'd taken in his entire career. And I went, that's not good. And then if you looked at him doing jump things like this, you could see he was tight up, he didn't want to do it. You, you, could, you could see it when you filmed it and watched it back. So that was one of the things that led me to know that something wasn't right with him. Um, it ended up being a long journey to find out what was wrong. But um, that was something that taught me there's something there. So monitoring your dog's jumping style is a good heads up to know how fit they are, how healthy they are. And if your dog is like Sparrow and has got early takeoff syndrome, they can still do these things and compete and, unless it's very serious. Some dogs have it so bad that they're a liability on a course. Sparrow is largely not a liability on a course, even though she does take off at epic distances. It's just something to bear in mind, and that's a whole other discussion. But I hope this makes sense, and I hope this gives you an idea of how you can monitor your dog's fitness. And if you've enjoyed this video, you might like to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.